Chile marks the 50th anniversary of the coup d'etat that ousted late President Salvador Allende. The Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro continues his official visit to China as he meets authorities and institutions of the Asian giant. In Morocco, authorities continue search and rescue operation after Friday's earthquake that killed about 2,500 people. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Luis Alberto Matos from Adresu Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. In Chile, commemorations continue for the 50th anniversary of the coup d'etat against late President Salvador Allende. The ceremony was attended by family members of Salvador Allende as well as leaders and spokespersons of international organizations. In the activity held at the Palacio de la Moneda, a minute silence was held for the victims of the military dictatorship while paying homage to President Allende. During the day, there will be a Citizens' Act in commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the coup d'etat in the Plaza de la Ciudadanía, and later there will be a dance in memory of the disappeared detainees who were perpetrated by the then dictator Augusto Pinochet's forces. And as Chile commemorates the 50th anniversary of the coup d'etat against Salvador Allende, several Latin American heads of states arrived at La Moneda Palace to take part in the homage to the victims. Uruguay's former president Jose Mujica arrived with his wife Lucia Topolansky at La Moneda Palace in Santiago. Also, the president of Mexico Andrés Manuel López Obrador, the president of Bolivia Luis Arce Catacora, and former president of Colombia Juan Manuel Santos also attended the events. The local Ministry for Foreign Affairs indicated in a press release that the Prime Minister of Portugal, Antonio Costa, and the President of the Federal Council of Germany, Peter Stenzner, have also confirmed their attendance. This Monday, September 11th, marks 50 years since General Augusto Pinochet perpetrated a coup d'etat against the government of President Salvador Allende, after which he imposed a 70-year military dictatorship that left more than 40,000 40, victims. Almost 10,000 Chilean women dressed in black garments represented mourning march to demand justice and truth for the human rights violations perpetrated by the Pinochet dictatorship. The massive event was carried out as part of the activities commemorating the 50th anniversary of the coup d'etat against the government of President Salvador Allende. The women had planned to walk around the government headquarters, but they were not allowed access to the streets and managed to demonstrate in the esplanade located between the Palacio de la Moneda and the Alameda. Traditionally, every year on September 11th, the relatives of the disappeared detainees march around La Moneda, but this year the authorities restricted their circulation. The protesters were chanting Nunca Mas, which translates as Never Again, calling for the non-repetition of the grim chapter of Chile's history. And as Chile continues to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the coup carried out against the democratic government of Salvador Allende, we remember the victims of Pinochet's military dictatorship and their struggle during the Chilean cry that this cannot happen again. We share with you a necessary story from Hernán Cafeiro. Make me an instrument of peace that where there be hatred I may bring love, where there be insult I may bring forgiveness, where there be darkness I may bring light. Antonio could have seek asylum in the embassy of Spain and escape, but he decided to stay in Chile and go on the ground to be there for the people. Oh. 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 
He never renounced his priesthood. He believed that it was in that place that the word of God was most needed. He was not afraid of death. Father Lido only feared to succumb under torture and give away names. But I can attest that he never did. The house where he stayed while he went on the ground was never raided, and those closest to him were never detained. <laughs> Our comrades are being detained every day. I hope I may be able to resist. If something bad were to happen to me, I want everyone to be clear that I freely choose to commit to what I'm doing. I find joy in knowing that this is exactly what I am supposed to do at the present time. Antonio knew his end was near, and he asked me to deliver this letter to his relative and loved ones. Antonio not only showed us what consistency in man, he was the light that allowed us to remain standing when there was no hope. Antonio Lido was last seen on October 5, 1974. Como consolar, ser Olvidando se encuentra, muriendo se resucita la vida eterna. We're going to take a short break now, but before we invite you to join us on TikTok at Telesur English, where you'll find news in different formats, news updates, and much more. Stay tuned with us, we'll be right back after a break. Welcome back from the South. On Monday, Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro held a meeting with Lin Wun, Secretary of the Provincial Committee of the Communist Party of China of Shandong and Chairman of the Standing Committee of the Provincial People's Congress of that city. The meeting, which took place in the Chinese city of Shandong, was held with the purpose of strengthening strategic cooperation ties under the principle of mutual respect and solidarity, as well as sharing experiencing experiences in the political, economic and social fields. Wu was accompanied by Lan Hu, Chinese ambassador to Venezuela, Kyu Shaki, special representative of the Chinese government for Latin American affairs, San Haibo, member of the Standing Committee and Secretary General of the Shandong Provincial Committee of the Communist Party of China of Shandong, among other authorities. Meanwhile, the official Venezuelan delegation was represented by Celia Flores de Maduro, first combatant and deputy to the National Assembly. Delos Rodriguez, executive vice president of the Republic, Gabriela Jimenez, Vice President for Science, Technology and Innovation, and Gabriela Jimenez, the Vice President of Science and Technology. In this context, the Venezuelan President ratified as a reliable partner and ally of the BRICS during his visit to the headquarters of the financial entity in the city of Shanghai. During his meeting with the President of the new BRICS Development Bank, Dilma Rousseff, the Venezuelan President stated that he observes with great admiration the whole process of the new world geopolitics. He also expressed his support for the creation of a new financial architecture that would allow transactions with national currencies and new forms of financing for the development of the countries of the Global South. During the meeting, the Venezuelan president manifested his conviction that the institute is in good hands. For her part, Rousseff made a special recognition to Nicolás Maduro for standing firm in defense of his country in spite of the adversities. We could call the extended BRICS group the great engine for the acceleration of the birth process of a new world, a world of cooperation where the global south has the leading voice, a world without hegemonism, a world without colonialism, a world without imperialism. And on today's new episode of Venezuela on the Move, we travel to the state of Carabobo. Carabobo is located in the north of the country and it is an industrial region. 
In this study, we will visit Don Tito, an essential poultry company for the food industry of the country. Don Tito is one of the pioneer companies in using technologies that have helped them to improve their production and the quality of their products. Nowadays, Venezuela is a country that produces 100% of the eggs it consumes. Let's get to know this poultry company that has contributed to this great achievement. Our, our colleagues, Adriana Sivori, with the details. At the entrance, the Egg Monument is a poultry company. This industrial poultry house is accommodated a total of 220,000 laying hands. Giancarlos is one of the people in charge of feeding and maintenance. He is a farmer by birth and has been with the company for seven years. I learned everything I know about birds here. I had worked with other animals, with cattle, with pigs, but not with birds. And I learned here. I started in raising and breeding where they arrive, little ones, just 24 hours after they were born. With these small touches, they can tell if they have enough calcium. Then they are passed onto the transport machines and then they are cataloged. Here they produce eight different types. Seventy percent is automated. It needs another thirty percent from the workers. Without them, we can't make the selection that the company needs to be able to distribute the classification. Having start operations in 2008, they also produce dressing and mayonnaise. They are 256 workers. They modernize to improve production. We are pioneers in this cutting edge technology. Not everyone adapts. It is not easy. Our poultry farming was of California staffs, floor hands. We innovated. We brought technology from outside, Brazilian, European, and we have elevated sheds of seven floors with controlled environment. And we bet that our country will always be at the forefront with technology products. I believe that Venezuela has everything to continue growing. Before, 90% of the eggs were bought from Brazil and Colombia. Now, Venezuela produces 100% of what it consumes. Jesús Romero y Adriana Sibori, Telesur, Carabobo, Venezuela. We're going to take a fun short break now, but before we also invite you to join us on YouTube so you can visit our channels to stay up to date with the latest news of what's going on in the world. So click on the subscribe button and activate the notification bell. Fun short break, don't go away. Welcome back from the south. In Morocco, the authorities are doubling their efforts to help the victims of Friday's earthquakes that killed more than 2,500 people. Moroccan authorities do not rule out that the death toll could increase in the coming hours. Meanwhile, the number of wounded is at 2,476. For the time being, efforts are being stepped up to continue the search and rescue work while assistance to the affected areas continues. The authorities announced an emergency program to rehabilitate, support and rebuild the destroyed houses as soon as possible. Almost 31 persons died here. Yesterday we used all our efforts to help and rescue people here. We did what we could, but for many other people we could not help them. So they stayed on the rubble. They could not breathe. We helped one person to let them breathe, but many other people died. We could not help them. In eastern Libya, at least 150 people were killed in floods as a result of Storm Daniel, which has swept the Mediterranean. According to Mohamed Massoud, a spokesman for the Benghazi-based administration in Libya, the disaster area showed massive mudslides, collapsed buildings, and entire neighborhoods submerged on the water. 
He also said the Prime Minister of the East based government, as well as other ministers, had traveled to Derna to evaluate the extent of the damage. The storm struck eastern Libya on Sunday afternoon, notably the coastal town of Jabal al Akhtar, but also Benghazi, where a curfew was declared and schools closed for several days. Hundreds of residents are still believed to be trapped in difficult to reach areas. Japan plans to complete the first phase of the discharge of nuclear wastewater into the Pacific Ocean on Monday. The Tokyo Electric Power Company operator of the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant reported that the first phase of its discharge will be completed on Monday as planned. During this process, some 7,800 tons of contaminated water were discharged into the ocean, and the second phase will possibly start at the end of September. Japan began discharging radiation-contaminated water from the damaged nuclear power plant into the Pacific Ocean on August 24, ignoring public concerns and strong opposition from both the country and the international community. On Sunday, the Brazilian government announced that it will allocate resources for food affected territories heavily impacted by an extratropical cyclone. The acting president and vice president of the South American nation, Geraldo Acmin, visited the regions affected by the tragedy, which added another death in the state of Santa Catarina. Acmin insisted that the first thing to save is life and then rebuild the cities, recover the economy and give the people their jobs and income back. The federal resources, amounting to $149 million, will cover the reconstruction of roads, bridges, houses, health centers, the purchase of food, and the cleaning of cities, among other key tasks. The climatological event caused 47 fatalities and left 924 injured, as well as 46 people missing. In Hawaii, the United States, the Kilauea volcano erupted on September 10th after three months of low activity. The onset of erupted activity was recorded by observing images from a webcam installed at the summit of Kilauea and following field reports indicating that an eruption had begun inside the Halamaumau crater. In response to the situation, the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory raised the volcano alert level from attention to warning and changed its code from orange to red. The eruption was anticipated by a period of strong seismicity and rapid uplift of the summit of Kilauea and one of the world's most active volcanoes. U.S. President Joe Biden concluded on Monday a two-day state visit to Vietnam that official sources describe as fruitful in taking bilateral relations to a higher level. The General Secretary of the Communist Party of Vietnam, Yuen Phu Tron, assured that the talks with the U.S. head of state were fruitful in spirit of friendship, equality, understanding and mutual respect. The Vietnamese leader led the official reception ceremony of the U.S. head of state the day before and emphasized that both parties agreed on the establishment of a comprehensive strategic partnership for peace, cooperation and sustainable development. Biden, for his part, considered that a new status of bilateral ties will be, force, will be a force for prosperity and security in one of the world's most important regions and said he was enthusiastic about it. And on September 11th, the U.S. remembered the attacks that occurred 22 years after Islamist hijackers seized control of airliners and crashed them into the Twin Towers of New York's World Trade Center and the Pentagon. President Joe Biden was flying to Alaska after a five-day trip to India and Vietnam and was to deliver a speech at the solemn ceremony in Anchorage. With President Kamala Harris, Second Gentleman Douglas Emhoff, and other officials joined the families of those killed on the two planes that crashed into the towers and on the ground at the 9-11 memorial. The attacks killed more than 3,000 people and prompted the then-President George W. Bush to launch a global war on terror that included a military assault on Afghanistan to find al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden. Like this, we have come to the end of this news brief. You can find this and more news on our website at TresorEnglish.net. You can also join us on our social media, so on Facebook, X, Instagram, Telegram, and TikTok. For Tresor English, Luis Alberto Matos. Thank you for watching.